Welcome to my talk. So the title is somewhat scary. Uh, the t paper is about using layer systems for proving confluence of first order terminal writing systems. So let me provide some context. So as I said, the context is first order terminal write systems. And I'm lucky that the previous uh, talk was about ground tree rewrite systems, where we had an example which used different letters but looked something like this. We had some f of a and b, and this could be rewritten to uh, f of a prime of some c and b using a rule that said that a can be rewritten to a prime of c. I should say that uh, we talk about term rewrite systems uh, where we consider these trees as terms. So this left-hand side would be f of a and b. And uh, similarly, the right-hand side would be f of a prime of c and b. And the first order aspect is that we allow variables in rules. That is, we could have a rule that rewrites f of x and y, where x and y stand, uh, are placeholders for arbitrary subtrees. And uh, that could be rewritten to f of, sorry, to make this example work, to f of a prime of x and y. And uh, this left-hand side has an instance where we replace x by a and y by b, which results in this term. And using the same substitution for the right-hand side, we obtain this term. So that's what first-order term rewriting is, and that's what we are talking about. The, the origin of this uh, is actually equational reasoning, where for example, well, f could be, I, I don't know, could be addition, and we could have a rule like this that x plus y equals some right-hand side. That wouldn't look like this, but uh, we will actually see an example later. The next concept that we use is confluence. Confluence is useful for us because uh, it actually, it is describes that uh, when we consider term rewrite systems as a model for computation, that the results are well defined. Confluence will be introduced on the next slide. And confluence is actually useful without termination. I mean, we can ask whether this, uh, these sequences are always finite. That's the problem of uh, termination. But even when uh, the rewrite system is not terminating, uh, it could be a uh, it could be a program that well keeps running forever. We are still interested in whether uh, the computations path diverge or are essentially uh, or still can always produce the same intermediate results. I skimmed over the general model of computation part of it. Uh, the idea here is actually that uh, functional programming languages uh, can be considered uh, as uh, definitions of term rewrite systems, which are not first order, but higher order, but that's uh, not so important. And actually, comp uh, combinatory logic, uh, which is universal, is an instance of a first order term rewrite system. So in our group, we are actually interested in automating, uh, that is deriving decision procedures for subclasses of uh, term rewrite system, originally for termination. But uh, there is uh, also interest in uh, automating this for confluence. Of course, the underlying problem, as almost all interesting problems in computer science, is undecidable. And the interest lies, interest lies in uh, finding powerful methods that 
decide as many problems as possible in practice. So let's move on. What is confluence? Well, confluence just says, well, if we have a starting term S and uh, some rewrite sequences applying those rules uh, that result in different subterms, T and U, then we can find a common reduct that is a term V such that uh, both that we can find rewrite sequences from both T and U to V. So what are, well, the origin for this was equational reasoning, and there's a, well, there are methods to decide equational systems uh, that uh, start with a set of equations and uh, for, try to orient them and complete them. That's Knut Bendick's uh, contribution. And uh, underlying this is a criterion for com confluence, namely that if a system is, a rewrite system is terminating and locally confluent, that is, uh, it's confluent if the rewrite sequences from S to T and S to U are restricted to one rewrite step, then it's also confluent in general. And another important criterion is orthogonality, which is essentially the uh, justification for functional programming languages, where we say, okay, if, uh, in a local context, it's always, uh, 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 rules are always unambiguous, uh, then the system will be confluent. This is just vague. This is not a, f a formal definition I'm, I'm going to have an example later, but it's not so important for this talk. And of course, there are many other techniques, which I will not explain now. Today, we are interested in modularity, many sorted persistence, and order sorted persistence. To explain what this means, we need some definitions. So we now introduce term rewrite systems formally, so what is a term rewrite system? Well, we have a signature that contains, consists of a, term, a set of function symbols and of a set of variables where each function symbol has a given arity. And then we can construct terms over this signature inductively in pretty much the obvious way that is uh, each variable is a term and uh, F applied to uh, the number of a number of terms given by its arity is, again, a term. And then we can def define term rewrite systems as a set of rules that uh, have a left-hand side and a right-hand side, each of which is a term. And we require that the variables that occur on the right-hand side also occur on the left-hand side, and that the left-hand side is not a variable. Because uh, if the left-hand side is a variable where we could uh, replace any subtree or subterm of a given term by the right-hand side, and that's, well, a fairly degenerate case. So that's the, in the ordinary TRS. To explain persistence, we will uh, use many sort of TRSs where in addition to the signature, we have a set of sorts that is, uh, well, every term, every subterm of our terms has a sort. Sorts could be natural numbers, integers, or lists, etc. That's the intu intuition. Furthermore, we have uh, variables uh, for each sort, which are distinct. And for e instead of an arity, we have uh, for each function an, a signature, which is the, uh, well, the types of its arguments and the, re the result type of a function. And the definition for, of terms is then changed accordingly. We have uh, terms for each given sort alpha, that is uh, terms of that sort which uh, can be constructed uh, from either variables of that sort or uh, by applying a function with uh, the right 
result type to uh, terms of the correct argument types. So that's where the signature comes in. And I abbreviate the not notation by saying that this f of that uh, signature alpha 1 to alpha of the RT to alpha is included in f. And while well, rules are essentially defined in the same way as before, with the restriction that uh, the types of the left-hand side and the right-hand side must be equal. And one further tweak to this definition results in order-sorted TRSs, where uh, sorts are actually ordered by some subtype relations. So for example, uh, uh, n is a subtype, natural numbers is a subtype of the, the integers, with the intuition that wherever we require an integer, we can also use a natural number. And accordingly, for the terms, we then allow at argument positions not only terms of the precise type of that argument terms, but of any subtype as well. And for rewrite rules, we, define, uh, we require that the right-hand side is of the same type as the left-hand side or of a more specific type. One final technical definition. Um, in this case, for order sorted TRSs, uh, we say that a variable on a, on, in a term is strictly bound if uh, it exactly matches uh, the required argument type of the function that, where it occurs. So these are known results. Uh, the first result is a um, result about ordinary TRSs. Uh, the, if R1 and R2 are TRSs over uh, uh, disjoint signatures, uh, then there is a result by Toyama from 1987 that uh, says that these, if both these TRSs are confluent, then the union of the two TRSs is confluent and vice versa. Then uh, for many sorted TRSs, there's the result that when we have a many sorted TRS that is confluent as a many sorted TRS, then when we forget about types, the resulting ordinary TRS is also confluent. And vice versa, this result is by Toyama and Aoto from 1996. And for in the same year, uh, they published a technical report where they claimed that uh, this extends to the order sorted case as well if we require that all variables are bound strictly everywhere. So why is this interesting? Well, consider this TRS where we define uh, the difference of two numbers by saying that the difference of the successes of two numbers is the difference of the two numbers, and the difference of x and 0 is x. And over there, the difference of 0 and x is 0. And uh, if we uh, take the difference of two equal numbers, then that is also 0. And uh, assume that this is extended with a rule on lists uh, that says, well, we can re replicate elements infinitely. So we repeat x as an infinite list uh, consisting of, of elements x. And the problem with this TRS as well, the classical conditions uh, do not apply. The TRS is not terminating, so we cannot use knut bendigs And the TRS is not left linear, that is, there is a left-hand side, uh, on the right-hand side of the slide, where a variable occurs more than once. Therefore, we cannot use these criteria uh, to conclude a confluence, and uh, as it turns out that a lot of more advanced criteria also don't work. However, using modularity, 
where we know that, notice that the last rule actually does not use any function symbols uh, that occur in the other rules. Uh, we can decompose those TRS into two TRSs, namely the first four rules and the last one, and we can prove confidence for, uh, for each of these in, individually and use modularity to conf uh, conclude that the whole TRS is confident. So the claim is that this is actually useful and interesting. On the other hand, for this claim on order sorted uh, TRSs, we have a counterexample. So here we have a rather huge uh, term rewrite system. And there's some symmetry in the rules here. For each uh, rule in the left column, the rule in the right column is obtained by uh, replacing f by g and g by f. And while well, it turns out that all requirements are uh, satisfied, in fact, for the, except for the last rule, this is a many-sorted TRS. And in the last rule, well, if we check the left-hand side, then it has sort one, that is the result type of C. And if we check the right-hand side, then it has sort zero, uh, that is the sort of X. And how does, why is this a counter example? Well, uh, there are some boring parts in the rewrite system, uh, well, graph, but this is the interesting part. So we have two components uh, which look very similar, but, uh, well, they are f of X comma O, can be rewritten to A and in a cycle, and uh, G of X comma O can be rewritten in a similar way and to B. But the point is that in the sorted setting, we cannot replace these X's by O, because O has sort, sorry, O has sort one, but the context where the X's occur have a sort zero and one is not a subtype of zero. In fact, the relation is in the opposite way. However, when we uh, change to the uh, ordinary TRS, then of course we can replace X by O, and then the two components here collapse, and we have some term that rewrites to both A and B. And then we cannot join A and B because these are normal forms. So this result of modularity, this is, sums up the first part, uh, has been proven several times. And uh, most important of these proofs is the so-called simplified proof that's a part of the paper title by Klopp and others. And it, uh, there are a number of derived results like persistence that we've see, just seen that are based on the simplified proof. And uh, the technical report was also based on this proof, but turned out to be wrong. So we thought it was, would be interesting to look uh, at the common core of these proofs and find where the actual mistake is and uh, try to find a common well, ground uh, so that we uh, can prove uh, similar such generalized results more easily. I should spe uh, speed up, I guess. So what is common in these proofs? Well, consider this uh, example for, uh, for modularity, where we have two disjoint signatures. And the first TRS is not important. The second TRS has a rule that C of X goes to X. And well, and how does do these proofs uh, deal with the fact that there are two disjoint uh, signatures? What they do is that uh, when they take a term and look at the points where uh, a subterm doesn't fit, that is where the signature changes. So in this case, for f of c of f of x, 
these breaks uh, in the signature happen between F and C, and then again between C and F. So we have uh, uh, split terms. That's one common concept. In the many sorted case, uh, this would happen when the argument type uh, of a function does not uh, match the type of the actual parameter. And we can, in this example, we could rewrite f of c of f of x to f of f of x. This can be done on the split term as well. Then we would have f, then a break, because there was a break previously, then f of x. But it turns out that actually these have the same signature, so there shouldn't be a break there. And in a further step called a fusion step where two uh, where layers are merged, this would uh, result in f of f of x with no splits at all, or no breaks at all. And the second common concept here is uh, that uh, these parts of uh, the that uh, term can be broken into, uh, in this case, f of applied to a whole that can be replaced by other parts and so on. These uh, occur in all these proofs and we call them layers. Rewriting, that's also common, acts on layers pretty much independently. And as I have already shown, layers can fuse. So a layer system is essentially a set a subset, a set of terms over an extended signature where we add a placeholder for common subterms, uh, for, for subterms where the signature that didn't really fit. So F of some whole. So that's what a layer system is. That's half of the title of the paper. And we have the following results. I should say that this is not the, sorry that this is not the complete uh, definition that we use. Some conditions are missing. So what are our results? Well, if R is a left linear TRS, that is, if uh, variables on the left hand side do not occur more than once, then uh, and the layer system is weakly consistent, which, is, which I will define on the next slide, then if uh, the uh, TRS is confluent on the layer system, restricted to the actual terms without holes, uh, then, R is, uh, then this TRS is also confluent on all terms as an ordinary TRS. Then we have the same result for non-duplicating TRSs. This, uh, the reason that it is a separate theorem is that uh, the proof is wholly different or completely different. And for uh, general TRSs, we have additional constraints that have to be satisfied. So this slide I will not explain, but this is what these conditions look like. There's a lot of notation here that I haven't introduced. But uh, let's look at how these uh, conditions translate in the order sort of modularity case. If, well, what is the layer system in this uh, case? The layer system is just the set of well-sorted terms. And after we've constructed that, we also uh, add the terms that are obtained by replacing variables by holes. That is these uh, square symbols. It turns out that the first, uh, third, fifth, and uh, eighth condition are trivially satisfied. In the second, the second condition essentially may, means that we need uh, infinitely many variables of each uh, sort, which is a standard assumption. And the fourth and sixth uh, conditions are satisfied if we require that, sorry, the fourth condition is satisfied if we require just that left hand sides, that in the left hand sides of rules, variables are bound strictly. Same for the sixth rules and the seventh rules. I have, uh, or the seventh uh, condition, 
is a bit more complicated, but interesting in that it is the reason that uh, the counterexample was actually a counterexample. If we look at this again, in the, as split terms, we have a rewrite like this, where we have f of a left argument and O in one layer, then and as the left argument is O in, this, in the next layer that rewrites as displayed here. And from there, the, using the first rule there, that is we have f of x, y goes to f, big capital F of x, c of x, and y. And from there, we can apply the second rule. And after that, we would have, instead of this O, a separate layer in the second argument. But it turns out that uh, we actually the type fits, and we can refuse these layers. And that's that is we had applied a rewrite step at the top of the term, and uh, this resulted in some fusion to happen. And it turns out that the proof fails if this is allowed. And the corrected condition that uh, we derive here can derive here is that variables in the right-hand side of rules uh, have to be strictly bound. This was also required before. And for so-called collapsing rules, where the right-hand side is a variable, the sort of x must be maximal with respect to the given order. So this is the re result for order-sorted TRSs. Many sorted persistence and modularity are easy consequences of this. We have some further results that also fit this uh, framework of layer systems. And to conclude, we've seen uh, modularity and layer systems uh, and how, and persistence, sorry. Uh, we've introduced layer systems as a common uh, concept used in all these proofs. And have presented a counterexample and the correct result for order sorted persistence. I have omitted all proof details because they are really very, very technical. And I think without context, uh, it wouldn't make sense, sense to present. Future work would be to simplify this proof a bit and uh, formalize it in uh, uh, interactive theorem prover and yeah, find more applications for this framework. Thank you. Thank you.